Hello everybody, welcome to The Daily Sip. My name is Oliver and my mission is to bring you closer to organic Japanese green tea. And today what we're gonna dive into is the difference between Gyokuro and Karigane. So some of you might have already heard these two tea names and that these two tea names actually are um, pretty close to each other. Just one is the stem version of the same tea but um, let's dive a little bit more where the tea names come from and um, what they actually or how they differ in terms of type of tea. So when we go into the Gyokuro, also called as the Jade Dew, is one of the highest theanine, the theanine richest tea in uh, Japan in terms of leaf tea. And uh, with Gyokuro, we talk about the tea that is shaded for 28 to even 30 days. Some even go even longer. But mostly it's the last four weeks before the harvest, the tea is shaded. Sometimes they're a little bit shorter, sometimes they're a little bit longer, but at least above 20 days is a typical naming of Gyokuro or Gyokuro comes into place when we talk about 20 days and plus. When we talk about the Karigane, Karigane is uh, also under the name of crying wild goose or just wild goose. So these are the two kind of uh, translations of this tea. And what the Karigane actually is, it is a derivative of Gyokuro or high grade Senchas. Mostly when you go out and you look or you find the Karigane as it is a very rare tea, often it is made of high grade Senchas especially when you go a little bit in the pr low price section, they are made of centures. This one here is actually a uh, Karigane, which is coming exactly from this Gyokuro. So it is the stem version of uh, this tea here. So we have actually the same tea just once we have with, uh, with the stems inside and once it is a de-stemmed leaf tea. When we have a look at the teas, what we can see clearly then without the stems, the, the tea is in general much darker. You don't have kind of brighter parts to the tea. Meanwhile, the Karigane is a mix of stems and leaves and you can really see that the lighter, brighter parts are the, the leaves, which are, um, uh, are the stems and the other ones, the darker parts are with the, like with the Gyokuro, it is the um, normal leaf parts. So we have here, I would say, around uh, quite a 50-50 mix of leaves and stems and the other ones, uh, the other one is really a de-stemmed Gyokuro green tea. Both of them are coming from the south, both of them from the same farmer, so we really have the same circumstances for both of the tea, just the difference is the stems in the Karigane. So we can really see or we can really dive into what the taste difference between these two teas are and actually what then finally does this evolve in terms of taste notes. So let's have a look and dive directly into these two teas. For this, I brought my two Kyusus. This time I have two um, red Tokonami Kyusu. So I'm gonna just take five grams of each tea And maybe I can evoke while I'm brewing this tea. So I will brew them at uh, 65 degrees Celsius, around 150 um, degrees Fahrenheit. So, wild goose. Why is it called wild goose? And it's actually quite simple. So the goose is a, an animal which is a little bit nearly, a, could you say, a holy animal in Japan. And often stories children's stories, fables are made out uh, or kind of uh, protagonists of these stories are actually um, a goose or um, is a goo or can be a goose and what it is said that actually in the, one of the fables um, a goose had to fly long distances and she had actually a twig in her mouth and this twig she used when she got tired she just posed it on the water and she uh, she laid herself on it and it is said that this, this twig was a twig or a small branch of a green tea plant. So that's why Karigane is called the cry of the wild goose or just wild goose. And now I guess we already got this two minutes. So number one, first we're gonna take the Gyokuro. And 
second one, we're gonna take the karigana. So what I took also for the gyokuro is quite important. So gyokuro gets better over age. This means that after around three years of right storage, gyokuro can have actually the best taste. Um, this tea now has around one year or is around one year and three months old. So it is getting in the direction of a good gyokuro. Normally when you have a gyokuro and you enjoy gyokuro, try to enjoy one which has at least six months of age. This comes for, from the fact that over time, the catechins, so a little bit more the bitter particles, they start to break down in the tea and the tea gets sweeter. So this is also done, for example, with the storage of matcha. Before the matcha is finely ground, normally the tension leaves, they're stored for one to 1.5 or even two years, just to bring down a little bit the bitterness and bring up the sweetness of the tea. This is something completely kind of normal, 40s which don't have to show like these fresh grassy tones directly from the harvest uh, like for example Sencha or Shincha even so the very first harvest so with these teas you can definitely age them a little bit and this can then even make a sweeter taste this just for your reference if you ever go to a store don't shy back from an older Gyokuro if it is rightly stored then you can easily drink it and it even becomes better. Good, so but let's go into these two teas. So you can see already the Gyokuro Chamusume, which I'm using here. This one here gets a little bit of a darker color, darker leaves, darker color, a little bit more kind of a yellowish golden. And here we have kind of a light, nearly milky golden through the stem. So you can see that the difference of these two teas is already visible. Let's have a smell of the leaves. So when we go for the Gyokuro, we have a lot of grassiness. There's a sweet umami, a little bit of banana peel. These are a little bit the notes I'm getting here, just the top notes. And let's see how the Karigane. Much more of a cereal tone, even a kind of slightly roasted tones, cereal tones. And sweet corn I get a lot kind of uh, the really the yellow the yellow sweet corn and a little bit yeah. normally sometimes you get a little bit of sunflower seeds I was just checking this with the uh, stem teas but a little bit of a nutty but a little bit more hazelnuts than a sunflower seed okay good so let's go into the tasting of these two teas Mm -hmm. It's very fine, very smooth, nice umami flavor in the in the in the end. So we took first we got a kind of a nice sweep. Mm -hmm. There's a hint of grassiness. So when you take this is a yabukita gyokuro. Yabukita is a cultivar which is also the mostly spread or the most spread. People like it because on the one hand it has a nice grassy flavor, it has a quite a complex flavor in terms of it shows a little bit of grassiness, it has a nice umami flavor, but as well it is showing actually a nice umami flavor profile. This one here is a typical example, so we go a little bit from a grassy tone, a little bit to a more sweeter and then in the end to a nice umami flavor profile. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet, it became an even sweeter. So the grass and the little bit, the bitter tones, they really go down over age. I drank this also as a younger tea already. It really gets more smooth, more sweet and not that strong in terms of, or not showing any kind of parts of bitterness. Let's see the Karigana. Mm. Mm -hmm. Impressive, very sweet as well in the beginning, so quite close to this one. Mm -hmm. But this one shows more smoothness to the taste. So here we have a little bit of a smoother tea taste profile, a little bit of a um, kind of a little bit more kind of this sweet, slight fruity tones. I get a little bit of banana peel while here
Mm -hmm. I don't get as much banana peel, but I get a little bit more kind of a sweet, a little bit of a corny and the cereal flavor profile. So it moves nearly, yesterday I was drinking uh, um, uh, Kamairicha, which is a slightly roasted tea and the stems, they really go into that direction. Even with this tea without being roasted, it has a slightly kind of a cereal, nearly roasty flavor, which is kind of showing itself mostly in the taste profile of sweet corn with a mix with a hint of cereal notes so we got two very sweet notes so here we still get a lot of fruitiness and a lot of sweetness but it's more kind of lingering in the direction of the cereal tones it goes more in the direction of a of kind of a sweet sweet uh, flavor profile and here we get more much of much more of a smoothness and not so much of the cereal tones and smoothness the banana peel we have with it then there's a little hint of grassiness and in the end a nice very nice umami flavor the umami flavor both have it this one here is a little bit drier a little bit more kind of um yeah a little bit more with this kind of roasted um hints of with it and here we get a clear sweetness Yeah. So definitely, definitely two amazing teas, just different in their taste from the same tea, same leaf, same farmer, same region. Everything is the same, just a little bit more of um, stems and or 50% stems, 50% leaf. And here we have 100% leaf. Here we got much more of this little bit cereal tones, a little bit um, uh, um, nearly roasted flavor profiles. And here we get much more of this round sweetness and smoothness of the tea. So definitely something you can just, uh, kind, of, kind of find out for yourself. Two teas, different, but or same, same, but different. How we used or how people used to say when I was on my travel through Vietnam. So. Very beautiful teas and um, something very much to discover if you had never had a stem tea or you want to evolve a little bit stem tea, definitely karigana can be something for you, but kukicha is also, so the normal stem tea, which is deriving from essential could be also something for you. So I hope you liked this one here though. This was daily sip number 75 and we keep going in uh, showing a little bit what we discover in Japan and what kind of different teas you can actually drink coming from Japan only organic and um, only with my new setting here where I have moved in just recently. So I hope you like this one. Thanks a lot. And if you ever have questions, please feel free to do so. Ask me anything and uh, we will see each other pretty soon. Thank you. Bye bye.